So the story of the poop spreader is that this is a 140 weight chain. Um, the chains come in different weights and this is a pretty heavy duty chain. But we're, um, Ethan went to the field with it. It broke one chain that drove the augers. Well, the, we fixed that chain and then he went to the field again and it broke another chain. So we're suspicious that there's something in there that we dumped either a piece of concrete or a stone. So, but this is what the spreader looks like. It's loaded with pen pack. Um, so we don't know if we picked up a stone or a piece of concrete, but we're gonna find out here soon. Ethan is up front working on the chains and uh, we haven't, I've only had this done a couple times in my lifetime so far, but over here on the workbench, this is a 140 chain. If you notice here, the basically the pin that goes through the link split and I think we got one more broke because there's this one that we cannot uh, we can't twist it or bend it but I walk over to the front of the spreader you notice this chain or this rocket don't have a chain on it so this is the second chain that broke the first chain that broke is this one here this chain drives all your augers so we're assuming that well, this, this we, re we replaced this one here we got it running and then it i mean like within a second of it running it broke this one but this one was still running so i'm assuming it's or presuming it's that down there so we're going to take out the shear pins so this top auger will rotate and this one will rotate but that one won't so we can get as much out as we yeah. can so that way we can get it un unloaded as much as possible. So that's what we're working on and uh, trying to get it done before. They say there's a storm coming, so we'll see. But that's what we're trying to get done. Welcome back to Acres of Clay. For those of you that are new to my channel, I'm Rhonda. If I don't get another video out before Christmas, I want to wish you Merry Christmas right now. I hope you and your family are doing well, that you have a healthy and safe Christmas, New Year holiday from our family to yours. Uh, I pray that it's blessed. A lot of you don't even celebrate Christmas or you're not going anywhere for Christmas and so our hearts are with you during that time Christmas Day actually for Kevin and I is going to be very quiet we won't be doing uh, any gathering or Christmas celebrating on Christmas Day our families our family is gathering later in the week so today we're getting ready for a blizzard. It's on its way. In about two or three hours, we are gonna be under a blizzard warning for the next couple days, I think. Tomorrow being the worst, or that's what they say. Sometimes forecasts are wrong, hoping that this time it's wrong, but it's starting to snow right now. So we've gotta get our work done. We've got calf barns that need cleaning and deep bedding because even if we don't get the snow, we're going to get some wind, 50 to 60 mile an hour winds, 
and we're gonna get very, very cold temperatures. So we need to get that cleaned up one more time before the really cold and then get that deeply bedded so it stays, so those calves can stay warm. I'll I have no idea, but those guineas have stopped hanging around Mackenzie's chicken and decided they wanted to live over here. So for the last couple days, couple nights, they have hung around over here. And yeah. They're kind of ugly and they're very noisy, but they're kind of fascinating. I don't know what she's gonna do with these things. So now I'm heading to the workshop. Sanders was taking video earlier uh, of what was happening in the workshop with Kevin and Ethan and the manure spreader. I'm gonna see if they made any more progress. Cleaning out, trying to figure out what exactly broke the chain. And uh, the snow is starting to snow a little bit more. It, snow. Yeah. But it's not windy, so that's a good thing. This is taking longer than expected. This is what it looks like to pitch a manure spreader looking for whatever is breaking the chain. And this is like pen pack manure, so it's full of straw or maybe some hay in there. So it's all kind of twisted and wrapped together and hard to dig through. You're doing good, Ethan. This is a smelly job right here. Well, they were pretty accurate. The uh, they, the weather said that the snow was going to come around 4. And let's see what time it is. 3.30. A little bit early. Maybe the heavy is going to be at 4. So, uh, this chain broke first. So we replaced this chain. You replaced the whole chain? Nope, we put a link in it because it broke a link. And then this chain broke. So, because we were trying to figure out what's going on, why it wasn't turning. So this chain broke. So what we did is put this chain back together, but we pulled the down on that big gear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we pulled a, uh, that has shear bolts. And for some reason, the shear bolts are not shearing but the chain is breaking mm. so i don't know if the chain is just getting a little fatigued or what but if you get something in the spreader it's supposed to shear them shear bolts and while that hasn't happened so we pulled the shear bolts so that way the top auger would run and the other auger would run and that's what you see ethan is in there right now cleaning it out but we unloaded a little over half of it got it half unloaded so now we're looking for the big surprise to see what's stopping what's our causing auger. it um, so you took the shear bolts out you said yeah the shear bolts go in them little holes oh yeah down there and that's a feature on the newer ones the older ones didn't have that feature so um we took them out because they're supposed to shear yeah but are you going to put them back in when we find what's wrong oh with okay it. Cause we ain't gonna put them in until we I see so we're digging in the spot where we think it, I'm leaning towards a stone a stone or a piece of concrete a stone oh okay so I got this um, they call it a biscuit press but I call it a spritz cookie maker um, I got this actually from one of my viewers because mine broke a few years back and I haven't made spritz cookies since then and I really wanted to this year um, but when I went to find my cookie maker the kids reminded me that I had thrown it away so that one didn't turn out because it's the first one but I have cookie dough in here 
I wonder if it's a little bit too stiff. But this is a really good cookie make. This, this is a really um, strong press. I really like this one. Because it came with all different kinds of ends. So that one was kind of like a wreath. This box actually shows me all the types that it makes. And I need the box to tell me that because I really have no idea. So I wanted to try um, the tree. We can try the tree. So just... Okay, the tree is a little bit big. We'll see how that looks. Some of them a little bit more bigger than the others. See how fun that is? going in the oven. Well, last time I came through, uh, we didn't really have that much snow. We've probably gotten a couple inches in the last few hours. Not bad. It's very nice out. It's right around freezing right now, so it's not super cold and it's not windy. So, it makes for very nice weather. Anyways, it's dark out already, and pretty much all afternoon was spent working on this manure spreader. Uh, and Kevin's gonna share with us what we found. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, what did you find? So, um, we'll have to crawl up and take a look in it. Uh, oh, all right, hold on. So, we're looking down in the spreader now, and if you look where my uh, <laughs> my po pointer but right there is a knife and okay. that knife if you notice has baler twine there's some uh, there was a piece of plastic net but, wrap net wrap so basically this knife there's a carrier bearing like right here it's with a it's like a poly sleeve and on Meyer spreaders that's kind of our neglect but this knife is supposed to stay clean. Ah. So that way when the auger pushes it past to this point, it's got to go past this carrier bearing. And then this knife like cuts it like if you get a wad of straw or hay or whatever. So basically it was balled up pretty good on this knife. So it was pinching. It was basically just not allowing any room for clearance past this uh this pipe right there okay so um the other side is all right right there's a knife on the other side if you see that mm -hmm. so that knife clean and was fine but it's kind of it's neglect on our part and uh so we sharpened it good sharpen the knife yep we sharpened that it's kind of like a shear knife sharpen that one and that one and there's a little bit of build up here. Yeah, we got to jump back in and take the grinder and uh, kind of get the trash out. Wow, you can see right there. Yep, a little bit build up yet. A little yet. bit starting. So we got to do that side yet, but it got supper time. And, <laughs> and it got dark. And it got dark. And, and you uh, were cold and, and wet. Wet. Because so they were in here working. Most of yeah. All most afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. Ethan actually worked at it longest because he replaced the chains and stuff, but. But yeah, it's just a lack of kind of neglect on our part to keep that knife. So every three years or so, you should so check out what it looks like. Every three years, yeah. Well, that's how long we've... Wait, we've, we've had it two years. No, we've it's, it's two and a half. We got... It's about three years. On my years. birthday. You got it on your birthday? Yeah, it's a so birthday it's three gift. Years, it was three years ago, though. No, it will be three. Next year? Yeah. I don't think it, I think it's three years. Away. I'll look back. So we're gonna look back to see what an update <laughs> right. in the next video. And, I'll look uh, back before that. We're having a little fun here discussion with that. So, um, but all you guys that own Meyer spreaders, it'd be wise. They probably already know that. Maybe you guys already know that. Yeah. But it might be wise to check here, make sure them knives don't get covered. Yep. 
So, because for whatever reason, Baylor Twine gets in there. I know, and uh, everybody's supposed, everybody's supposed to pick up their Baylor Twine. <laughs> and I said, for you know, we go through approximately, I don't know, five, six hundred bales a year of different stuff. Yeah. So. Ooh, a few I heard some wind. Wind started. A little so, bit. Uh, we've got a couple inches of snow already. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Thanks for letting our viewers know. Yeah. So we'll see how much we get and we'll keep you updated. Yep. Well, we've been in here five minutes. And in those five minutes, the wind picked up. Great. We gotta walk home now. <laughs> yep. Still have to clean the calf barn because they worked at this all day. Yeah. So we're going to do that yet tonight. Whew. I'm sure temperatures are going to fall. Yep, there's that wind. Ooh. Feels colder already. <laughs> Getting ready to clean both sides. Um, this side, we have quite a few calves in here, so every couple days it needs cleaning. And then the other side doesn't have quite as many, but it needs cleaning too. So we're just going to go ahead and do both. Alright, basically got this side cleaned up. There's a little bit of moisture under here, so we might put some lime down. If we don't put lime down this time, because we did last time, um, we usually rotate. Uh, if, if we don't put lime down this time, then we'll probably just put some sawdust down before we bed it with straw. And everybody's in here. You're gonna go clean the other side? Yep, clean the other side and then do the same uh, thing. Same thing and get them all bedded down good before it gets cold. It's already getting cold, sorry. It's already getting cold. Yeah, it's already getting there. Well, it is about 12 hours later, and it was about 30 degrees last night. Now it's 5 degrees. Yes, you are. This chicken, <laughs> this chicken has a story. That's one of my meat birds that I thought just was too small, and I was going to keep him. Anyways, he's still really small, but... He lives with the calves. He sleeps among them. They love him. He'll like sleep right in the middle of them all like that to stay warm. This is what it looks like outside. Dakota, she just loves it. She slept in the garage last night because it's so cold. The wind chill's about 15 below. But she came out and she was just running through it all. So we haven't had a whole lot of snow. I guess they're forecasting 12 to 18 more inches in the next day or so. Today's supposed to be the worst. Gotta plow the driveway. 
driveways out. I'm gonna carry this calf to the calf barn because it's chilly in here. We got a new baby. Oh. There we go, sorry. Oh. It's seven degrees out, so it's warming up. We made it. Um, your head's getting laid on. Can you get 660? That calf's laying on. What are you doing? Hey! <laughs> She's like, but well, it was warm. <laughs> yeah, it was probably really good. <laughs> it couldn't breathe, but... <laughs> there we go. Kinda of chilly. We're out on the road checking out what the roads are like. And our farm is right here, but you can't really see it. You can see the grain bins, the tree, you can't really see the barns. Just starting to now. Feels like negative 17 out. Yeah. <clears throat> it's so, chilly. So you guys that live in the Minnesota and Dakota, you're probably used to this stuff. Oh yeah, this is nothing. There we go, now we can see. So we just get some whiteouts every little bit. How does the snow not phase her? I'm just watching her out the window thinking it's cold. She's just rolling in it. Now today, since it's so cold and blustery out, what's better than a big pot of chili? I am using navy beans and great northern beans for this since we don't really care for the kidney beans. And I'm not using black beans, so I'm just gonna do this. And so I got this in my Instapot, right like this. I'm gonna do the beans because I didn't think ahead of time and put beans. I had these soaking for a couple hours in some vinegar water, um, but just for a few hours. Um, so I haven't had this cooking yet and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So I thought, well, a great way to quickly cook beans is in my Instapot. I'm going to be adding some stewed tomatoes right into this. All right, I've added all my spices. I also added some uh, freeze-dried onions and freeze-dried peppers. I was gonna add freeze-dried celery with it. I love a lot of veggies in my chili, but I, I couldn't even find any. So it's gotta be around here somewhere. I just couldn't find it at the moment. So I'm gonna have to get this stirred up and put the top on and we'll probably pressure cook this for 25 minutes and see how they look. Are perfectly cooked. I'm gonna add the meat and then just kinda let it simmer and thicken up. That's what's for supper.